Welcome to the Perpetual Show Where the loaves go, we've got flow Oh yeah Driving through the fields of green all oh so bright With the loaf by your side, everything feels right Loafing through the fields, feeling so alive In our boxy Russian van, we're taking our stride Past the fallen soldiers, a bittersweet sight Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to start off by saying I'm pretty upset right now because uh, we worked all day uh, updating the map. And I can't post a map update because Google broke. And it's incredibly frustrating because I've, I've literally been working for, uh, what is this, like uh, 16 hours straight? So I, like I really wanted to post a map update like we're like the map is like ready to update you know and I can't because Google broke and it's so frustrating and the way it broke is so bizarre okay so um, for example in Google Sheet if you sort numbers it will not sort the numbers in the correct order which is weird weird Thing that Google apparently has lost the meaning of numbers and um, and for that reason uh, I, I have a, a function that I wrote that exports the data from Google and it's a reasonably complicated function it's probably over engineered to be honest um, but it requires casting some things as numbers and other things as letters. And right now, Google has no idea what the difference is between a number and a letter, so the function can't work. So it can't export anything. So that's great. So there's no map update. Even though the map update is ready to go, there's no map update. So what can you do? Um, so here we are. <laughs> We're we're uh, stuck on yesterday. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm pleased to see that you're here. From uh, that Jonathan sent you here. Jonathan's a good guy. I've been on his show a few times, and uh, probably again in the future at some point when my life is less chaotic. <laughs> Maybe in a day where Google doesn't break, um, who knows. But yeah, so... The biggest news lately has come from uh, Kresna Harivka. Um, there's, there's stuff going on around Tonenka, but we don't really have footage. Um, there's stuff going on. Uh, north of Avdivka, north of Berdi uh, Berdici, 
or Brigitte, uh, there's stuff there. And uh, obviously, uh, Chess and VR, there's things going on. And then um, that's all the stuff we have in news for. Then there's uh, other things going on in this general area that we have no news for because it appears that both sides are keeping this in a radio silence sort of situation. So there's nothing I can really say. I uh, there, There's rumors that, that Russia has advanced along this tree line and they may have established themselves a little bit more further to the east. But I don't think that's even what people are talking about when they say there's things happening. Uh, from what I understand, there, there's probably more near uh, Priyutni going north um towards Nova Derivka. Um, but but again there's there's no actual there's no video there's no photos there's nothing to really go off of um, but the people in the know are whispering that there are, there were big attacks here recently um and also towards uh, Staromayarska so i can't really say anything because there's no evidence there's no uh things to talk about you know so um one thing I can talk about is that yesterday there was this uh, this Russian assault. This assault kind of tickled me a little bit because uh, this I think it's an MTLB. It's kind of hard to tell because it's it's just a vehicle with like sheet metal on top. I, I think it's an MTLB though. It might be like a it could be a tank. I don't think it is. Uh, it could also be a BMP. But basically, it drove on this diagonal while getting shot at by artillery, etc. Um, you can see that there's like um, oops, uh, this uh, Depicum shelling. Um, you can see the vehicle. It's like right there. <laughs> Here, I'll make the image bigger. I'll make the image bigger. That would just be better. Um, here. So you can see the vehicle is right there. Um, and this uh, Depicum is a... Uh, or DPICM cluster munitions. Uh, these are exploding around here. Um, there was an artillery shell hit prior there. Um, another artillery shell hit here. Another artillery shell hit there. So they were shooting at this this lone vehicle as it was driving. Okay. Um, it drove, 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 drove all the way up to here. It got hit by more. Um, here, it, hit, it got hit by more cluster munitions. I believe one of these submunitions may have hit the engine of the vehicle because after this point, uh, the vehicle is very sad looking um, and it didn't make it too far after this. Um, oops. It, it drove up to here where you can see this. You can see here, it drove to here. The infantry, uh, that's a little person right there. This little dot is a person. Um, these dots are also people. So like a few guys like ran north and a few guys ran into this house. And uh, that was about it for them or, or for that attack. Um, then um, you had a Ukrainian counterattack. Um, Where they open this image. Uh, there's a Ukrainian counterattack where you see some dudes. There's uh, a few dudes running around here. They were clearing out uh, this basement. Um, they kind of wandered around and then um, they started flinging uh, drones at each other. So this was an assault that went on. And I just wanted to bring this up because it shows that the Russians, they, they drove up on this kind of angle they went on the street and drove up, and um, uh, they disembarked around here. The Ukrainians were attacking here, and the Russians and the Ukrainians are both occupying this kind of area simultaneously. So um, it just kind of goes to show that this uh, this mapping is more or less accurate on where the gray area is. And uh, thank you, Duck Duck Twenty.
Yes, uh, Ukraine did their attackums attack, which I'm not going to talk about. To be honest, today I'm not going to talk about that. Wait, wait, that's kind of that. Um. Moving on, uh, Kresna Harivka. This was the big attack that happened not yesterday. The video came out yesterday. I believe this attack was actually on the 13th. So it, it was about four to five days ago, maybe six days ago, um, that this attack happened. And in this assault, you can see that um, Russians, uh, they started roughly over here, and I believe roughly over here, uh, they moved down the field uh, like this, and across, and up, and um, they started assaulting um, roughly at this intersection. They drove on down. Um, they disembarked infantry around this building here in the in the middle of uh, the town, uh, near the rail railway. Um, infantry were moving on up, um, trying to enter buildings. Now, there are a few points to make about this attack. Obviously, this attack went very viral. Everyone knows about this attack. But there are a few points that have been brought up by various people, various sources. Um, the one point is that people are asking, how is it that the Russian vehicles are able to move across these fields, apparently at will, with uh, barely being shot at? Um, there's some light artillery shelling, like very light artillery shelling. Um, the artillery doesn't appear to really do anything. Uh, there's no apparent drone attack. There's no apparent minefields. Um, no ATGMs to speak of. How does that happen? And how can it be stopped? So the, the answer to that is I think there's only one crest of Reef. Anyway, the, the reason why I think Ukraine is having trouble stopping this it, 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 there's a few a few reasons, but, but they're all really kind of the same reason, but there's a few reasons that all add up to one problem. First problem is that these buildings, these industrial buildings, which are all quite tall, have all been bombed out very extensively. These buildings would, in theory, uh, give you very good line of sight for ATGMs to fire across the fields. But they've all been bombed out um, there were, these buildings were largely, they're not demolished, but they were largely bombed out in February, um, the beginning to middle of February. To my knowledge, they, they still drop bombs here, but nowhere near to the extent that we saw in February. February, they were dropping like a lot of bombs every day. And now I, I don't hear anywhere near as many, but they just may not be talking about it, but and not posting video. So it, it could still be happening. But, but but we know it happened mostly in February. So these, these buildings were taken out. Not not entirely, they're still there, but they're they're hit pretty heavily with bombs. Um so that that took out your, your best vantage point for defense. Uh, another problem is that Ukraine is apparently lacking ATGMs in general. So um, obviously, obviously their, their main ATGM would be a Stukna. We don't know really, at least I don't know their production numbers really. There's lots of rumors around how many they can produce. Um, they also use javelins, obviously. Javelins are in relatively um, low numbers, unfortunately, although that might change soon. And, and then there's other things like N-laws, which are too short range. And, um, you know, other similar stuff like that. So 
obviously to, to hit the vehicles crossing these large fields, you need a longer range or ATGMs like a Stugno. So, so there's, there's a general lack of, of ATGMs. Um, the best ATGM spots may be destroyed or at least uh, reduced in effectiveness pretty uh, substantially. Um, uh, third point is that all of the best places for an ATGM, you, uh, Russia has been countering with their own um, ATGMs and tank fire. And um, the minefields that did exist have been um, dismantled or handled in one way or another. And by one way or, in, or another, we kind of mean Russia just drove vehicles into them until the minefields were gone. So that's that's one one thing to talk about. Um, the other problem is that people are saying, why not use FPV drones? Um, to my knowledge, this area, gener generally speaking, has FPVs in number. I don't know if they're enough, but they have they have a number of FPVs. But the vehicles that Russia has been attacking with are moving with electronic warfare and additional armor packages, including um, they kind of built a house around one of them. So that, that's another problem. So um, and then the, the, the next issue is that uh, Ukraine has a um, severe lack of ammo for their artillery. So you have no artillery, not enough ATGMs, no mines, and FPVs can't help you. And that's how Russia can cross this field on the post. Um, so Russia gets into this town, um, but Russia is suffering from a lot of those same problems. Um, they're suffering from all of the buildings in Krasnoharivka being demolished by the Russian Air Force. They tried moving into these uh, industrial-ish warehouse -y type buildings, um, but these buildings are largely destroyed um, by Russian bombing. Um, they tried moving into this uh, building here, which is, uh, I'm not really sure what it is. It is it's like some sort of like government building, I think. Um, but that building is largely destroyed as well. Um, this building here is largely destroyed. Most of the larger buildings that you would use to build a strong point are effectively demolished by Russian aircraft, by their bombers. So the Russians are having to disperse amongst the houses and moving into the basements, which um, is doable. It's what they've done pretty much everywhere. Um, so uh, it can work, but it's a limiting factor in their ability to keep on pressing. Now, there is one issue where they, uh, the Russians pushed their, <laughs> not loading, uh, it, they pushed their house tank, you know, the tank with a big shed on top. Um, they pushed this, this big turtle into the industrial zone. I want to talk about this briefly. Um, we have heard rumors that may or may not be true. Um, we've heard rumors that, that may or may not be true that um, Ukraine let this tank move through. Um, now, why would you let it move through first? Um, it's up, it's being, it being up armored and covered by electronic warfare would make it more difficult to kill. Uh, second, it's alone. Um, third is that you might just want to see what it does. Wait, I don't, I'm not entirely convinced that this story is true, that they let it go through. Um, but I could see it being true. If you were, if you didn't have enough anti-tank weapons to begin with, if just one tank is rolling towards you, maybe you let it go. Maybe you save your ammo for when they're attacking with 10 tanks instead of one, you know? Maybe, I don't know. 
I don't really buy it, to be honest, but we've heard the rumor. So this is um, kind of everything that I know of going on here as of yesterday. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is the, the Krasno Harifka area. Now I'm going to look at the chat for a second. Oh, uh, we have quite, we have comments about the artillery. Um, Ukraine still doesn't have enough ammo. Um, the additional ammo has not been delivered yet. Well, some of it's been delivered, but. Uh, the deliveries that exist are only to keep Ukraine going and not additional. They will get additional, but it's not there yet. It's going to take weeks still. If the U.S. package passes, that could change everything very quickly. And they say they're going to vote on it on Saturday. And then the Senate would have to wait for, like wait a few days to get it, and then the Senate could vote. And technically, I believe the Senate is supposed to be going on a recess, which they may postpone. And there's a whole big thing in the air. It might take another week if everything goes well. It might take another week for that to pass. And um, But if it does pass, things could change rapidly because the U.S. could start just pumping supplies into Ukraine pretty, pretty rapidly. But we're not there yet. So uh, right now... Ukraine does not have additional ammo. Um, from what I understand, they have been moving ammo around strategically, um, taking ammo from one area and moving it to another. But that can only go so far because you need ammo everywhere. You can't, I mean, there's only, you know, you know, there's only so much you can play games. At some point you just need more. And thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Jackson Weber. That is very kind of you to grant the gift of green eyeballs to others. It's very honorable. I like how like most of the chat is green. <laughs> yep, you Russia has been using their air force, their air power, to get oddly close to the line. There was one video that was alarming from uh, Chassis VR that came out a few weeks ago of a bomber, like, almost on top of the city, or town, whatever you want to call it. Um, that was very alarming. Very alarming. But it is what it is, you know. Anyways, um, yesterday we had a whole bunch of video from Pervomyska, and this is probably all old, but it was uh, Russian drone attacks on various Ukrainian positions around Pervomyska. This is probably, um, all this footage is probably from, I don't know, like a week and a half ago, right before Russia captured it, maybe two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, somewhere around there. Um, but it's interesting to see it mapped, all of these different positions that... Ukraine once held and no longer holds. Um, Berdichi, there's uh, some uh, Russian attacks with their drones. Uh, some Russian attacks north of Berdichi, near um, Novo Kalinove. Uh, these are probably old as well. Uh, it's hard to date things like this. I imagine they're probably old, though, uh, given their location and Russia's advance towards uh, the north. Now, um, there's talk uh, that yesterday that they, they captured this whole area and have moved all the way up to the outskirts. Um, I didn't see any direct evidence of that yesterday. And the map is for yesterday, so that's what we're going with. They won't let me update. Um, yeah. This uh, interesting shelling around uh, New York.
lots of uh, cluster munitions from Russian aircraft. Um, we actually, well, Gick, Gick found a, a destroyed vehicle uh, in this general area uh, that came from uh, a pretty funny source in my book. Funny to me. Um, it came from the Russian MOD. We, uh, we identified a a Russian loss from a Russian MOD. Now, I kind of want to show you the clip. I have to find it. Um... I, I found it. Uh, I have to go to the timestamp and I'll show it to you real quick. Here, uh, now I have to show it to you. Okay, so this is a, uh, this is a blink and you'll miss it type thing. Uh, but we can show you a, a Russian loss. In this this video, um, what was the timestamp? Uh, did I miss it? The, you blink and you miss it. It's hard to see. Did you see? Well, I'll just show it in real time. This isn't this isn't actually real time. So uh, here, I'll show it in real time. You tell me if you see a destroyed Russian vehicle. Did you see it? Did you see the destroyed Russian vehicle? Uh, I'll go back. Watch it again. I'll put it on slow-mo. Tell me if you find it this time. Do you see it? <laughs> it's in this, it's right here. It's, in, it's right in this part right here. You see it? It's right there. <laughs> Somehow Gick saw that. <laughs> uh, Somehow Gick saw it. <clears throat> Let's see what this is. Um, we're not entirely sure what it is. I kind of think it's a BM a BMD two. It could be a Nona. Um, it's hard to tell. It is rather BMD-ish. I don't know if, if you know what a BMD looks like. It is BMD-ish. With its uh, curvy nose, you know, and its flat bottom. Um, and it has uh, this kind of gap in the middle. I can show you a... Uh, a BMD two uh, from the top. <laughs> if I can find a good video, a picture of it. Um, this isn't. This is like a. This is like a model. We're, we're just gonna show a picture of a like a BMD model. Apparently, I can. Click it, right. Okay, so here's a BMD model. You see how it's got a curvy nose, it's got the flat bottom, it has a gap in the middle, in the back, you see? And then here we have this uh, this curve, uh, the flat bottom, and there's a gap right there. So it's BMD-ish. Now a Nona, a Nona has the same chassis. Okay, so um, this here, that's a Nona. Nona is a basically a mortar built on top of a, a BMD. So anyways, uh, that's a Russian loss right there that we didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. So 
Okay, so uh, moving on. So as of yesterday, <laughs> which is apparently what we're talking about, because they wouldn't let me export today. Um, what does there say? Let me let me think for a second. So, just if you are, when I hear from Ukrainians talk about Trasivir, they say that Russians have not entered yet. Now, I don't fully believe that, but I guess, I mean, I don't, there's not strong evidence to the contrary. Um, the Russians are claiming that they're moving on down this forest here and that they're getting close to entering the town, city, whatever you want to call it, around here-ish. Um, they're also apparently trying to push this way and enter around here, which is doing kind of the two pincers that we imagined that they would do in, in the first place. Uh, it appears that... It appears... It appears that their their goal is to make Ukraine abandon canal and move across the canal and fight along the canal. And today, there were a lot of rumors of Russians crossing the canal on the northern part of Chasavyar, of which I did not see any evidence. So yeah, um, I don't really know what else to say. There was a somewhat unfortunate video today of a, um, what was that exactly? Uh, it was right here, of, of a Ukrainian tank was uh, driving up this hill. Uh, it got hit by an ATGM and then uh, went backwards down the hill into the pond and it sunk. So if you see a sunk tank icon, or sunk <laughs> tank uh, in the stats today, this is where it happens. Um, I don't. I really don't know what else to say about Chassis here. What else is there to say? It's just it's going exactly how we thought it would. All of the problems that we knew would be there are there. All of the advantages that Russia. <laughs> We knew Russia would have, they have. And it's playing out exactly how we thought it would. Uh, we knew that they would go south. We knew that they would try going north here. And we knew that this attack north was not guaranteed to succeed and stands a good chance to fail. And it still can fail. It hasn't succeeded yet. It could succeed and it might fail. If it does fail, then the Russians will go to another plan where they'll probably try to wrap around even further north and go kind of this way. Um, I still kind of expect Russia to be forced to do that. Um, but they haven't been stopped here yet. Did the tank crew make it out? Yes. Um... One tank crewman jumped out of the tank. Um, where was that again? <laughs> it was in this pond. It was this pond right here. So, like, it, it got hit. The tank got hit between this bush and this bush. So it was it was right there, basically. Uh, the tank got hit here. I don't think the tank suffered damage. Um, but the driver panicked. And this is a rather steep hill. And I kind of think once the tank started going, I'm not sure they could stop it. Um, that, that was the impression I got. That it, like it started going, and it started just like going faster and faster and faster. And and if you've ever seen uh, a T64 go backwards, they're very slow. So it's it's alarming seeing it go that fast backwards. 
So, uh, uh, one, one tank crewman jumped out, like, around here, and, like, um, like, he just, like, jumped off the turret and, like, rolled down the hill a little bit. Um, uh, and then the other two jumped out of the tank when it went into the water. They jumped out. Uh, because the, the, the tank, like, the what, like, obviously it's a pond. It's not, like, falling into the ocean. The pond is, like, maybe, <laughs> it's probably, like, a meter or two deep, you know? It's not, like, you're falling into the abyss. It's just water. So they, like, kind of jumped out and ran up. They all, like, ran away. I don't know what happened to them after they ran away, but they ran away. Yeah, I've, from what I've heard over the course of the past few weeks, um, the, the Russian troops in this, like, in the Chesedyar area are more elite, and uh, the troops in the Ivanivska area are more green. That's what I've heard. I don't really know if that's still true, um, but it was true at one point. Like, uh, this area, I believe, was taken by more elite troops. Um, I don't know if those elite troops were then pulled out and then they sent somebody else in. Um, but I do know that they've been using more elite troops towards Chassivyar. And we've heard lots and lots about how the troops near Ivanivska are g relatively green. That they're, they're sending a lot of guys here who have basically coming fresh out of training like they 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 were training for like a year in russia and then they were sent straight here that's what we've heard and we've heard that from russians um they it's possible that those same sorts of people are doing this first push and then uh the elite are sitting in reserve that's possible in fact i would assume it's true I don't assume that the elite are leading the attack. I assume that they're using lesser quality troops to lead the attack with the elite sitting in reserve. Yes, I have heard about those Russians building their their levy or whatever you want to call it there. The pile of dirt. I've heard about them. They raised, I believe, thirty-four thousand U.S. dollars. Although not in U.S. dollars, but we're just gonna call it. It was like thirty-seven, uh, thirty-four thousand dollars, I think, or something like that. Um, the reason why was because they were being flooded by the river, so they paid. Um, they took their money. And they hired a local company to build an earthworks to protect their houses from the river. Um, the earthwork was successful, and they were all very happy. Um, but now the government is upset with them because the government built earthworks in a different town, failed, and the town flooded and caused tremendous damage. And the Russians are very upset about that flooding, saying that the government was corrupt. Um, the government official said that there that his dam was destroyed by rodents. I don't know how a rodent would destroy a dam, um, but that's what he said. He said it was destroyed by rodents, um, and the government is upset with the other people because they built a dam for... $34,000 and the other guys built it for like millions and millions and millions of dollars and it was obviously a money laundering thing, uh, you know, giving money to your friends, etc. So that's a thing going on in Russia. It's a big story there. Um, it has nothing to do with Ukraine really, other than that's kind of funny. So, uh, yeah.
that's uh, more or less all the news I got, really, to be honest. Um, yes, those rodents were made in the Ukrainian bioweapon labs. Um, they were specifically bred to knock down dams. And yes, Russia has elite troops. We do. And it's really obvious when you see them. When you see the video of their elite troops fighting, you it's so obvious they're elite because they know what they're doing. They do things like they use combined arms, they plan out their attacks, they use smoke screens, they use artillery cover, they'll use um like they'll have their artillery um clear out a position and move forward with their armored column so that the artillery is constantly shooting like a set distance in front of the armor um and they'll do that with both um high explosives and smoke so that the armor is constantly covered um on the flanks by smoke they'll do all these sorts of things that require a lot more training a lot more um communication and planning that shows that they are obviously elite soldiers they know what they're doing they're professional um and they're vastly superior than the normal troops that we see that just kind of like yolo forward on a vehicle and hope for the best they're very different it's it's so obvious seeing the elite Um, and I don't think it's equipment. I, the elite are better equipped, but it's the equipment isn't the issue. If you gave the elite bad equipment, they would still be elite. The thing that makes them elite is their planning and their uh, communication. It's that they, they work together. Um, the, the, the lesser troops, it's like the artillery do artillery things, the infantry do infantry things, and the tanks do tank things, and they never really work together. They're all just kind of like doing their own thing. Um, but with the elite troops, they work together. Like they all have a focused mission. Like the artillery is doing this for this purpose. The armor is doing that for that purpose. The infantry are doing this. That they're all a cohesive unit working together. It's and it's obvious if you see the footage, you immediately know. It, it, there's no doubt about it that these are the elite, and it's not what gun they carry. It's not what vehicle they're in. That's that's nothing to do with it. It's the their communication, their planning, their preparation. Um, in Bilaharivka, we've had some interesting um, footage. Uh, we have drone attacks, uh, uh, Russian drone attacks on this hill, suggesting um, a, <laughs> that Ukraine may in fact control this hill. Um, they've been hitting the same spot on the hill over and over again um, for a few days now. I am probably going to draw this as a Ukrainian controlled position. Um, Similarly, there are um, Ukrainian attacks in, in this kind of general area and uh, more over here, etc., that show that um, the Russians kind of control this high ground over here and Ukraine kind of controls this hill here. And um, the Russians may not be on this um, part of the quarry anymore, whatever this is called. I don't know if quarry is the right word. Um, but anyways, uh, this this may uh, we we anyway to to go back in time a little bit, we saw Russians kind of marching up like this, and they were kind of walking around on the side of this uh, hill thing. Um, it's like a pile of chalk or whatever. I don't I don't, even, I don't know what it's called. Whatever giant piles of chalk are called. 
Um, so uh, the the Russian infantry were walking around here, and it was rather worrying. We didn't like seeing that. But since then, um, Ukraine, it seems that they have reestablished themselves on the ground, and they may have uh, taken back this hill because they've been hitting there. Uh, Russians have been hitting there consistently. So uh, this whole area may have... Uh, it may be more accurate to say that Ukraine controls out to here. So yeah, that's that. Um, uh, there, there are rumors that there have been more attacks near Turney, um, but this is we we have had no video that I, uh, anyway, and no major videos, and. Uh, we may have to wait for high res imagery to really understand what happened. And the weather has been terrible, by the way. The weather has been awful. So that's kind of that. That's kind of all I had to talk about. Uh, beyond that, uh, there are rumors that Ukraine captured uh, this area right here. That Ukraine captured it. That's no longer a gray area. So that, that is a rumor that they captured this and that they now control this entire coastline, this entire part of the coast in uh, Krinky. Um, but that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, an unsubstantiated rumor. That's kind of all I had to say. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna get into the missile strikes, etc. There is, of course, um, the strike on Cherniev today, and there's been strikes in other places that I'm not gonna get into that. Um, I don't think Russia cares about dates. When people say, do you think they will do something by a date? I don't think anyone cares about the date. I don't think Russia cares. I don't think Ukraine... Well, Ukraine might care more than Russia does. They kind of, like, pretend they care. I'm not, I'm not convinced they actually do care. They kind of pretend they do. I don't think Russia cares. I don't care. Dates mean nothing to me. I live in a constant day of groundhog. It's like this groundhog thing where I wake up and do the same thing every day. Everything's the same. I'm not convinced time exists. Um, yep. I guess uh, we could very, very, very briefly talk about this Republican plan um for aid to ukraine should it pass um the aid package i haven't gone into detail on the aid package but on a cursory glance it appears it's not terribly different than what joe biden asked for uh, what joe biden asked for was nowhere near what is actually required and by required, I don't mean just for Ukraine. I mean just generally. Um, Biden did not ask for anywhere near enough. And the package that the Republicans are talking about passing is not much different from what Biden said. So in those terms, you could say that Biden is effectively getting what he wanted. Um, but in other terms, you could say that... Um, nowhere near enough is being done um the package will grant uh, hopefully a lot of ammo to ukraine possibly other things i'm sure we'll see a very large influx of artillery ammo mortar ammo um, other types of ammo grenades etc um air defense missiles um man pads javelins etc etc a whole bunch of um this package could likely fund um the ammo found in that uh check initiative so that could grant a whole bunch more ammo in addition to whatever ammo the u.s is going to give which is probably going to be a lot um so yeah um but all that said the package is about $40 billion smaller than it needs to be, which is unfortunate.
Um, I can tell you one thing. Ukraine's not going to have an unconditional, an unconditional surrender. <laughs> that just is laughable. It's laughable in space. Of course, that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's kind of all I had to say. I kind of wanted to do a short stream today, in large part because uh, I've been working all day. I'm updating the map that I can't even show you because the stupid thing broke. In fact, I'm going to check to see if it's still broken. Maybe by some miracle, Google fixed it. What do you think? What do you think the odds are that Google would fix a bug that they introduced for no reason? Um, spoiler, they didn't. <clears throat> okay, so... I hope you enjoyed the uh, brief update. This is, uh, this is all I got for today. It's still an hour long, so I guess it's not that brief. But it's brief for me. Um, I'm going to play a song now. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. Probably with more news. And hopefully with a map that works. Uh, so, see you later. Eric the geolocator He's always on your tail From a satellite far away He'll find you without fail You can hide behind a bush or a wall made of steel But Dirk will track you down He's got a geocating zeal Dirk the geolocator He's got his eyes on you From high above the sky There's no way he can't be seen through He'll zoom in with precision With a satellite device Dirk the geolocator He's always got you in his sights In the darkest corners where secrets usually hide Dirk will uncover them No matter how hard you've tried He'll pinpoint your location No matter where you roam Dirk the Geolocator He's got a GPS of his own Dirk the Geolocator He's got his eyes on you From high above the sky There's no way you can't be seen through He'll zoom in with precision With a satellite Darkest corners where secrets usually hide. Dirk will uncover them no matter how hard you've tried. He'll pinpoint your location no matter where you roam. Dirk the geolocator, he's got a GPS of his own.